we are in Luke chapter 4. And Jesus have just been through a fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He's been tempted by the devil in the wilderness. He is now coming into Galilee to use that place as the base of his ministry operation. And so he goes into their synagogue, preaches in many synagogues. Then he comes into his own hometown where he had been brought up. Went into the synagogue because that was his custom. Stood out to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was given unto him. And then he said this. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. Well, of course, if you understand uh, what went on in Jesus' day, if you were not rich, you did not have the gospel with you. Biblical literature, which was the Old Testament, was only privy or privileged for those who had money and those who were wealthy. So the poor can only hear the gospel when they went into the synagogue or they went into church. And so that is what Jesus was referring to. But more deeper than that, the poor here are those who know that they are destitute of spiritual need. They are destitute of the Christian virtues. The poor here means that those who feel that they are destitute of eternal salvation. Because he has sent me to proclaim release to the captive. And boy, there are people who have been held captive by the devil. You see that in 2 Timothy 2.26, there are a lot of people who are under captive by the devil. Some know, some don't. Jesus goes on to say, he has sent me to bring the recovery of sight to those who are blind. And sadly, there are a lot of people who have physical eyesight, but they are blind spiritually. For even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world, Satan, have blinded their eyes and their minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel and the glory of Jesus Christ. Friends, sadly, some people are blinded by the God of this world, who is the devil. And Jesus came to bring recovery of sight to those who have been blinded by the devil. And then he says this, to let the oppressed go free. And in the same way that people have been kept captive, people have been kept under oppression, there are those who are oppressed by the devil. And a classic example of this is recorded in Matthew 8 and Mark chapter 5, where Jesus is crossing a lake and in the lake there is a big storm. The storm is so big and the disciples are tossing around. Jesus was so unconcerned about the storm that he, he was sleeping on a pillow. <laughs> but after that storm, Jesus gets to the other side of the river and he is met by a person who have been possessed by demons. The Bible says that there are 2,000 demons of legion that was possessed by this guy. And Jesus 
met this guy. A strange conversation goes on. This guy said to Jesus, what have we to do with you, son of the living God? Have you come to torment us before our time? <laughs> so demons do realize that they have a time and that they will be tormented. But what is Jesus' business coming before the time? But for this time, they are here to possess this young man. And Jesus brought relief to this person who was possessed by 2,000 legions of demons. A legion is 7,000. So times that by 2,000. Friends, the devil is real and God is real. When Jesus finishes his manifesto, he then said this, Surely you will say to me, Doctor, heal yourself. We want you to do the signs here. Those you did in Capernaum, do it here, let us see. And then he says, well, because I'm not accepted here, I'm not going to show you any sign. Then he tells them to truth. He says there were many widows in Israel. None of them was the prophet Elijah sent to except the widow of Zarephath in Sidon. There were many lepers in Israel. None of them was the prophet Elisha sent to except the leper who was the commander of the Syrian army. When Jesus said this, the Bible says they were filled with rage, drove him out and put it on the hill that they might push him over the hill. But Jesus walked past them and he went on. Why were they rage when Jesus said that? I will explain why. Whenever we as Gentiles might miss something important in the biblical literature. The Jewish leadership always comes to our rescue. And we need to understand that. We need to understand why they were rage. They were in rage because God chooses who he blesses. The two examples that was given to them in the Bible, the, the widow of Zarephath and the Syrian commander, were both Gentiles. And although the Israelites have been chosen by God because they oppose the biblical message, because they oppose the gospel, Jesus told them those truths and said that hey, these two people were Gentiles and in spite of them being Gentiles, Jesus chose to bring deliverance. In the widow's case, deliverance to her son and provision for their food. And in the commander of the Syrian army's case, deliverance from his leprosy, these two people were Gentiles, but God chose to deliver them. And that is embedded in the doctrine of election. God said to Moses, I will make my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious unto. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion to. In Matthew chapter 23, Jesus, when he looked at the hardness of heart of the Jewish leadership, he said this, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets, and stones those who are sent to hell. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her children under her wings. But you were not willing. See, your house is left to you a desolate. For I say to you, you shall not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Jesus came to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of heaven and to proclaim forgiveness to those who recognize that their spiritual poverty is in need of his message. Their spiritual poverty is in need of his eternal riches. And those who are broken by the realization that they have sinned against a just God. The gospel of grace is for those who are humble, not the proud. The gospel of grace is for those who feel so poor in their heart that they are in need of righteousness. Because when we offer ourselves wholly and honestly to God, the act of believing in Jesus Christ cleanses us and brings us to full union with Jesus. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, friends, let us humble ourselves before the mighty throne of God, that in due season, he will exalt us. Amen.